If you're thinking about investing in data storage stocks, then you're going to want to read this first. And that's because the thesis is a little bit more tricky than just simply going out and buying stock in companies that manufacture hard drives, for example. So the thesis you should already know, it's the growth of big data, right? So this is a commonly seen chart by IDC that shows how, for example, in 2021, you can see where big data sits and then by 2025, what that looks like about at least double. So there's the old adage that says 80% of the world's data was created in the last two years. All this stuff rings true because now we have a lot of IoT devices that are generating data, a lot of data exhaust, things that are interesting that we may want to store because we can analyze them with sophisticated AI algorithms. So there are a lot of ways to invest in the growth of big data. You have data exhaust. That's where a enterprise's applications all have application logs and they throw off all this data and you can mine that for useful insights. NVIDIA, the world's biggest chip manufacturer, now sees data being the way forward. That's why they purchased Mellanox and now 40% of their revenues come from data, the data center segment. Then you have data warehousing tools like Snowflake. There are a number of firms that would be in that bubble. You have data center REITs, and we covered these in a recent article and video, particularly Equinix and Digital Realty. Then you have real-time data analysis, firms like Confluent that are analyzing data at the speed of however fast they can manage to, right? Then there's data storage hardware. That's probably the ultimate pick and shovel play on data. So what are the actual devices used to store data? And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So we want to acquaint ourselves with two different storage technologies. On the left is a hard disk drive. You're probably familiar with these. They have moving parts. Basically how it works. These have been around for as long as I can remember, decades. And on the right-hand side, you can see a SSD, which is the new sort of drive that's being produced, a solid state drive that's based on flash memory. So if you've been in computing for a while, you know the difference between a hard drive and RAM. Well, what if you could have a hard drive that was made out of RAM? Well, that would mean that everything would be accessible very quickly. And if you have a laptop, that has an SSD hard drive. Again, the nomenclature can get confusing here, but if you have a laptop equipped with SSD, you'll know what I'm talking about. So I'm giving this presentation on a Lenovo X1 with an SSD drive. If I close that cover and walk away and I open up that cover again, I'm right back where I was. So it's the only way forward if you use a laptop for work because it prevents you from shutting your laptop. In the olden days, you might stomp on some applications or it would take a long time to wake back up or boot up in the case of ssd drives they're extremely fast because it's a hard drive made out of flash memory so this is the way forward but the only problem is that they're quite expensive so when we consider investing in the growth of data we want to always skate to where the puck will be now when we look at traditional hard disk drives who makes those? Well, you have three firms that dominate this market. They capture almost all the market share. Western Digital, Seagate, and Toshiba. And this is an interesting chart that shows how their market share changes over time, but pretty much they're just swapping it amongst themselves. So traditional hard disk drives, these are the companies that you would invest in, but we don't necessarily want to invest in a data storage commodity that may be on its way out. And when we consider data storage, we also need to consider what niche we're looking at. So we're interested primarily in data centers. Why? Because by 2025, that's just three years away, most of the world's stored data will live in the public cloud. So there's this move away from having a large hard drive on your laptop to having data storage in the cloud where your stuff resides safely. So the move for SSDs to dominate data centers is a thesis. So you see here, Huai's VP of data storage said that by 2025, 
the cheapest flash storage may be 2.5 times more expensive than the cheapest hard drives, but it allows for 2.5 times greater compression, so the cost will balance out. That's very important. So when you use SSD data storage, you can store data a lot more efficiently, so you may not need one gig for one gig. You may be able to take a one gig hard drive and store that on a 500 megabyte SSD drive. That's an example. So when we consider SSDs as a replacement for traditional hard drives, we need to consider these other factors. Now, right now, based on estimates we looked at, anywhere from 20% to 30% of data center equipment runs on SSDs. The rest would be on hard drives. And this last bullet point here by Gardner says that data center SSD revenues will increase nearly 25% compound annual growth rate from 7.7 .7 billion in 2019 to 24 billion in 2024. And that hard disk drive revenues will decline at an almost negative 4% compound annual growth rate. That's what you would expect, right? There's a move in data centers for things to be done faster. There's three elements they consider. So it's performance, reliability, and cost. Well, as cost of flash keeps falling, they see performance and reliability being quite important, especially with some of the tools from firms like, as we mentioned before, Confluent and whatnot, needing to access data very quickly. So when we look at the cost of flash memory inputs, remember those SSD drives run on flash memory. So what's the cost of flash memory? Well, you can see here that over time it's been decreasing and that there's this ratio of the cost of flash versus a traditional hard drive. Well, what's interesting about this chart is you can see in 2017, 2018, there was a flash shortage. And there's actually been recent speculation that this may be a problem because there was some contamination in several factories in Japan. This was an article that we came across. The point being that the price may be declining over time, but this is also a commodity input used to produce SSD drives. So that needs to be considered as a potential risk. Anytime you're investing in hardware, you need to consider these sorts of things. Now, when we look at the total cost of ownership, this is a research report put out by a firm called Wikibon last year, and it's very interesting. And what we wanna point out here is their reference to this flash native approach, okay? So let's explain that very briefly. Flash native would be a firm that simply takes the flash chips and creates their own SSD, their own profile SSD, where they may optimize it from how traditionally SSDs have been manufactured. So they believe that that approach, simply taking the flash chips and creating your own SSD will lead to more flexibility and lower costs. And they believe that major cloud providers who are purchasing a lot of data center equipment like Amazon, Microsoft, Google, they have somewhere around 600 data centers equal to all the data center REITs. They have a lot of data centers and they're also said to be working on flash native storage solutions. So just going out and investing in firms that make SSDs may not be the best idea, especially when flash native is actually much more cost competitive. What they've done here is they've put together this total cost of ownership analysis over 10 years, which shows that if you purchase um, flash native solution, that it will actually be cheaper in the long run than buying traditional hardware. And this chart that they've produced on this next slide shows where some MBA went through and actually did the net present value calculations. It's quite interesting. And if you had the desire, you could sit down and go through and look at their assumptions and see what this looks like. The point being that they did the work for you and they say that flash native is the way forward. Now. As we said earlier, it's about utilizing the raw NAND flash chips to allow for novel designs which take performance to the next level. So you're able to increase performance as well as decreased costs. It's far more efficient than the tr traditional SSD architectures in terms of how it manages local and remote copies of data, how it places data, and of course, managing multiple levels of NAND technology within a data center. So from a customer's perspective, 
They're just buying SSD drives that offer much better performance characteristics than those on offer from the usual suspects, perhaps firms like Western Digital, which is the only HDD manufacturer that also has Flash. So they bought, uh, was it SanDisk? And now they have an activist investor, interestingly enough, trying to get them to separate the HDD from the Flash and split their business. You know, the idea of, of there being a synergy there didn't end up working out. Now, when we look at investing in hardware, there are some concerns just from a very holistic level. There's a constant downward pricing pressure, right? So your margins are always being compressed because you're selling a low margin commodity. To resolve for that, you need high margin recurring revenue streams that can supplement that, right? So as you have your margins compressed in the hardware, you have a big fat margin on your recurring revenue stream, whatever that might be, and it helps offset that. So an example of that would be Solar Edge, where they're selling, let's say, lower margin solar equipment, and they're building very uh, high growth revenue streams around recurring revenue. So when we invest in a firm like Solar Edge, our eyes are on those recurring revenue streams to make sure that over time, those will help supplement their margins. Now, when we look at investing in SSDs, as we said, Western Digital, they have this pressure that where they may split out the SSDs from HDDs, and then we'd have a opportunity there. But going back to that comment from Wikibon about flash native, that's the advantage that we want to keep in mind. So the other alternative would be to invest in the providers, the manufacturers of flash memory, like chip makers like Micron or Samsung. But again, these are very large firms and that's a commodity offering. So what we're looking for is a flash native vendor who creates high margin products from raw chips. So we know investing in traditional hard drives isn't viable. The growth rate is declining over time. We also know that data storage methods are resilient. So if you're worried that flash native may be replaced by something quite quickly, that's not the case. So they're, they're still using magnetic tapes from the 1980s in data centers. So when you have a storage medium, it lasts for quite a while. It's fairly resilient. So when we look at this thesis, investing in data storage hardware, there's a number of growth drivers here. There's the growth of big data that we talked about at the beginning of the presentation. There's a the growth of cloud computing and data centers, of course. There's this increased focus on performance, which is being driven by firms like C3 and Palantir and these predictive analytics enterprise software AI companies. You have the decli declining price of memory chips and that's resulting in a reduction in the total cost of ownership. They use less energy that's a green element to it so there are a lot of growth drivers behind the ssd slash flash native thesis so ideally we want to look for a vendor with a flash native offering that has recurring revenues and we've found one so in a coming presentation we'll be talking about that please leave your comments in the comment section make sure to subscribe to our channel and thanks so much for taking the time to listen to this today